Center for Spiritual Living, Southeast Louisiana, where conscious spiritual living abides. We are radically inclusive spiritual renegades who are healing hearts and creating community. And in this community, we encourage everyone to live in enthusiastic expectancy of their good, including abundance, beauty, love, joy, peace, whatever quality of God makes your life living fabulous. So let's begin with prayer. We just take a deep nourishing breath and allow the divine to flow through us. The God that is love and joy and peace and freedom and ease and grace. We are all that God is. Within us is each of those qualities of love, joy, freedom, peace, ease, grace. And what I know to be the truth is today, when we are speaking about when reality sets in, that each of us is recognizing that the way that we accept this new normal is to live in loving kindness, to allow us to calibrate our lights and shine it on someone else, allow us to be accepting and non-judgmental. And so what I know to be the truth is that everyone that's at this service, whether it be now or later on Facebook Live, that each of us is knowing the truth of who we are, that we are that love, we are that kindness, and that each of us is living from that place of knowing that love can indeed change the world for the better. So I am grateful, I'm grateful for this community. I'm grateful for the technology that allows us to come into your home. I'm grateful to know that all that God is, is right there within me as a expression of the divine. And it's from all that gratitude that I release these words into the law of mind, spirit, and action, because I know the truth that all is good, that the divine is already calling this done. So I just say amen, and we affirm it together, and so it is. take a deep nourishing breath and as we breathe in we allow ourselves to be thankful for this day breathing in again and on the out breath letting go of anything that appears to be other than love releasing any part of your life that doesn't seem to be working for you right now and becoming fully present to just this present moment. Allow yourself to settle in, feel the peace of letting go of everything other than this present moment. Know that God is right where you are. And I invite you to remember a time in your life 
when it was altered by someone loving you in a special way. Perhaps it was a simple way, a loving kindness that made all the difference. Allow yourself to recapture those feelings, that sense of being loved, that sense of being cared about, that sense of abundance of the good in your life. How often do we take time to breathe and remember that spirit shines through us, as us, in every moment of every day, healing whatever needs to be healed and lifting up all our joys. In Corinthians 9.6, we read this. Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. So think of your time in your life when you sowed generously. Maybe it was for a birthday or a special holiday. Perhaps it was just a card to let someone know you cared about them, a loving kindness. And remember how that felt. Did you feel an abundance of joy, of love, of peace, of accomplishment? Whatever the feeling, did you feel that your life was filled with love? Use this time of meditation to let go of any fear you have around these messages that are coming to you. Know all you need do is surrender to the power and the glory of the loving spirit which dwells in you. So as we return from the silence, bring back with you the guidance and the wisdom that was imparted to you. Feel yourself surrendering to the knowing that the divine is right where you are. See any request as being accomplished as a prayer that's filled with love and compassion. And remember, we are filled with loving kindness. We are well. We are happy and at ease. We are peaceful and 
this is our time for celebration and healing. The time when we pause in our service to celebrate all the people that have been doing wonderful things in the world, to celebrate those things within your lives which have made them more joyful, to celebrate the people that are having birthdays or special celebrations like anniversaries. So I just want to pause and allow you to say aloud whatever it is that you would like to add into this circle of joy of celebrations. And now because we are community steeped in healing, we pause to pray for those people who are not feeling the joy of life right now. So we begin a prayer. God is all there is. God is the love and the peace and the healing and the ease and the freedom and so much more. And as individual expressions of this divine, each of us has all of these qualities right there within us waiting to be awakened. So what I know to be the truth is that God is where each of the people that we are praying for is. That each of these people that are seeking something within their lives, that it's seeking them as well. So I pause now and invite you to speak aloud the names of anyone that you know needs prayer that you would like to add into our circle of love. What I know to be the truth is that the divine has heard each of these messages. I know that right this very moment, everyone in this community is opening their hearts and sending out love to these people so that they can feel the energy of God right there within them. We are sending love from our hearts to their hearts. And this release of love from us to them is indeed being felt. So I am grateful. I am grateful that I know that the God without is the God within each of us. I am grateful to know that there is healing going on because love is abiding in these people's hearts right now. And I am grateful that we as a community can be two or more standing together and requesting something in the name of these people that are hurting. It's from all that gratitude that I release these words into the law of mind, spirit, and action, knowing the truth, that we have planted these beautiful seeds of love and they are growing within each of these people in our circle of prayer, and God has already called it good. So I just say amen, and we affirm it together, and so it is. And right now, Pat has a reading for us. Uh, Pat Favron, who's also part of the music team, has a reading for us from John O'Donohue. Uh, today's reading is taken from a book entitled Walking in Wonder by John O'Donohue. It's a poem, and the title of the poem is I Go Among the Trees and Sit Still. I go among the trees and sit still. All my stirring becomes quiet around me like circles on water. My tasks lie in their places where I left them, asleep like cattle. Then what is afraid of me comes and lives a while in my sight. What it fears in me leaves me, and the fear of me leaves it. It sings and I hear its song. Then what I'm afraid of comes. I live for a while in its sight. When I fear it, it leaves and the fear in it leaves me. It sings and I hear its song. After days of labor, mute in my consternations, I hear my song at last and I sing it. As we sing, the day turns, the trees move. And so it is. When reality sets in like it's doing from this pandemic, our world gets changed permanently, and our mind, our body, our souls have to make adjustments so that we can adapt. 
This time in our country is a call for us to learn how to be kind and loving so that we can make a difference. So now is the time for us to see each person as merely wanting to be loved and to know that they are worthy of love. It's the time for us to change how we react in our life to situations and to other people. And for us to create an atmosphere of acceptance, of non-judgmentalness, and unity. So your question for today is this. What's the one choice that you might make today to easily and willingly recalibrate your own life and aim it for others, allowing your love and your grace to join with the work of the divine? I think that question's worth repeating. What's the one choice that you might make today to easily and willingly recalibrate your own light and aim it for others, allowing your love and your grace to join with the work of the divine? When we recalibrate our life, what does that really mean? Anybody ever seen that plaque that says, be patient with me, God's not done with me yet? I felt that a lot lately, just with all of the changes that are going on, with all of the ways that we're trying to reinvent ourselves and how to figure out to make these Facebook Live things work. I think that we all know that we're a work in progress as we move about this planet. It seems particularly true that the last couple of months, because we've been going through so many changes and there is this new normal that seems to be happening. So how do we define safe as we move among others? How do we define who we are now in this new situation? There's a great book called Tattoos on the Heart and Reverend Gregory Boyle says this, there is no force in the world better able to alter anything from its course than love. Meeting the world with a loving heart will determine what we find there. As our states open up and we adapt to new situations, I think it's especially important that we meet the world with a loving heart. It's easy to judge and be fearful when we are coming out of our safety of our own homes, maybe. Some of us staying very much in our homes to remain safe and we come out wearing masks and gloves and then we run into people that have no gloves and no mask i had a friend of mine tell me it's almost like you see people like they before the pre pre-pandemic they had uh they weren't wearing pants or something we're so shocked that they aren't wearing a mask to protect themselves it's like part of their clothing is missing and I got to thinking about that. And for those of us that are doing due diligence to stay healthy, we might have a tendency to judge other people for not wearing a mask. The Gregory Boyle that I just uh, quote that I just quoted comes from this chapter called The Slow Work of God. Boy, that's a great thought, the slow work of God. Because it seems that what we're saying is the same as God's not done with us yet. Now, frankly, I'd rather be fully cooked. And I'd like to know that I know exactly who I am and exactly how I'm going to react and exactly what I'm going to be doing. But I'm 71 and that's still not my own reality. And I'm sure that there's other people out there that would say, can't God be done with me by now? But I think we all continue to learn and to change who we are and to adapt as we do what's called recalibrating our light. So how would you go about recalibrating your light and what does that exactly mean that I put as part of the question? I think it means that we need to be actively having a hand in that slow work of God. That we need to be present to people in a state of loving kindness. And that we need to be focusing on tenderness rather than judgment. 
sometimes we want to just say, buck up, or deal with it, or quit being such a fill in the blank. I know that in this time and in this day and age, that it's calling for us to be a light. In that same book, uh, Reverend Boyle said this, Sometimes resi resilience arrives in the moment you discover your unshakable goodness. Sometimes resilience arrives in the moment that you discover your unshakable goodness. So in order to really recalibrate our light, we need to discover our unshakable goodness, that goodness that is so deep within us that nothing that happens on the outside is going to change it or take it away. That goodness that allows us to always foster acceptance and loving kindness and to meet the world with a loving heart. You know, Jesus said, you are the light of the world. He didn't say sometimes you're the light of the world. He said, you are the light of the world. We each have our own light. And it's necessary for us to uh, be who we are, to know what that light looks like for us. And yet sometimes I think we try to make ourselves out to be something we're not. And if you're saying right now, I never try to be somebody I'm not. I would challenge you to look at every aspect of your life because I think we all, in some area of our lives, uh, hide our light under a bushel basket. Now that phrase in the Bi shows up in the Bible and it's important because the thought is that we are being called to be all that we can be, to be all the light we can be. Sometimes I know that things come up and uh, we might hide who we are, maybe out of fear, out of sense of not enough worthiness. We might behind, hide behind a little lie because it seems easier to tell that little lie than to face whatever we'd have to face if we didn't tell that little lie. So how do we become that light in the world and not meddle with that slow work of God that is still working on us. Any of you have those lights in your house that when you turn them on, they come on pretty dim, and then as they stay on, they get brighter and brighter and brighter until they get to their maximum brightness. I think that's a little bit how our relationship with the divine works. When we first start looking at our spiritual lives and start doing our spiritual practices, we have this joining with the divine. And our light might be dim because we're just learning what it's all about. The more grace we have, the more love we have, the, the longer that we stay in those spiritual practices, the brighter our light gets because we become more and more connected to that divine self that lives not only outside of us, but also within us. We always say there is one life. That life is God. And that life is my life right here, right now. So how do we go about being who we are, which is love, loved, and loving? Can we make an effort to calibrate our light and meet the world with a loving heart? Gregory put it this way, a spacious and undefined heart finds room for everything you are and carves space for everybody else. It's actually a spacious and undefended heart finds room for everything you are and carves grace for everybody else. So what might be your new normal? How can you move into a spacious and undefended heart? And how can you embrace the second part of that quote, which is carving space for everybody else? Because I think that's equally as important, that we learn to aim the light to others. 
When I was in Portland, I had these three beautiful, beautiful old growth trees that lived in my backyard. And I would go out and water my garden and I would look at the trees and they were very grounding for me because they were old. They were over a hundred years old and they had that sense of something that had been there in my, in my entire lifetime for one thing, but it had been there for a really long time. And they had a sense of grace and a sense of majesty just because of what they were and how they looked. And then a tornado hit my yard and it uprooted one of the trees entirely. It fell. Didn't do any damage, thank goodness. It just fell between two houses. And it uprooted the other two enough that I had to cut them down. Well, I cried over my trees. I mean, they were a sense of my connection with the divine. I felt so close to that divine nature when I would look at those trees and realize how deeply rooted they were and how they really just branched up to the, they were very tall, they branched up to the sky and it, it was my sense of wow, of wonder about nature. But what happened was the slow work of God showed up as spring rolled around and my grass got greener and my plants and my bushes and my flowers that had lived a little bit close to the trees started really growing and blooming and blossoming in a way that I had never seen them because they weren't living in the shadow of those three old growth trees. Now, I know that there are people on the planet that think that their light is so bright that it doesn't matter if it overshadows other people. But the only way that we can have a light that is really the light of the divine that's shining out from within us is not to have it overshadow other people, but when it shines out from us, to aim it for others. To have it be that we are shining the light on them, the same way that the sunshine then was able to shine on my flowers. I think this is a wonderful analogy because we can't be our brightest if we're doing it at the expense of someone else. We can't be our best if our best means that we are not living, carving out a space for everybody else in our heart. There's a poet, a poet, Galway Kennel, and he writes this. Sometimes it's necessary to reteach a thing its loveliness. Sometimes it's necessary to reteach a thing its loveliness. Can you imagine what the world would be like if each of us tried to reteach the people in our lives that don't seem to be happy their loveliness? Can you imagine what it would be like if every day we connected with the divine and we looked at other people with a heart of lovingness, seeing everybody else's loveliness? I know there are days when I wake up and everything seems to go smoothly and it's a wonderful day and at the end of the day I still have lots of energy. And then there's those other days where the slow work of God is really not working as well as it could be through me. And I'm, you know, things don't seem to be going so well. Uh, and the day goes along and at the end of the day, I'm exhausted. The good thing for me is that I have wonderful friends that are willing to shine their light on me and aim it at me and say, you know, tomorrow's going to be better or you did a great job. You just don't think you did. They lift me up. So if you're having one of those days, remember that it goes both ways. You can call a friend. You can call a friend and say, you know, I just need a little loving right now. I need a little bit of reality check about how bad things really are or how good things really are. Because it does go both ways. We can allow ourselves to shine our light on others or we can allow others to shine their light on us. And sometimes we need to allow others to shine their light on us. We need to allow them to show us who we are as we are reflected in their eyes. Because sometimes we don't see ourselves as clearly as we, as we could. Remember, we are love, we are loved, and we are loving. So we need to allow other people to love us up. Ernest Holmes, who's our founding father, 
uh, had a Holmes reader on change. And he said this, every day in every hour, we are meeting the eternal realities of life. And in such a degree as we cooperate with these eternal realities in love, in peace, in wisdom, and in joy, believing and receiving, we are automatically blessed. Our prayer is answered before it is uttered. So, how do we cooperate with these eternal realities? I think we need to allow our grace to join with that slow work of God. A few years ago, I talked about marinating in the vastness of God because we all think of God as this vast, infinite thing. And we have to remember that it's not only the slow work of God, but we can marinate in that vastness of God, but marinating takes time. It's the slow work of God that builds this place in our heart where we learn exactly who we are, where we live from that place of knowing exactly who we are. In the uh, book, Tattoos on the Heart, Reverend Gregory talked about gang members, and he'd say some of them were just very resistant to ever getting rid of their tattoos because his particular um, industry provided tattoo removal for gang members. But what he said was he knew that if he was just patient enough that they would eventually come around. His philosophy was all people have innate desire to be good. Sooner or later, they're likely to come around. The slow work of God takes patience. It takes patience. And he wrote this line that I think is very pertinent today. Change awaits us. What is decisive is our deciding. What is decisive is our deciding. So today I want to invite you to decide to recalibrate your life, to really reach for everything that it is that you desire, and to be willing to reach each other their loveliness. I invite you to decide to aim your light for others, to have your spiritual flashlights shine not only on yourself but on other people in such a way that they also figure out that they can shine their light and feel safe, shining it not on, only on themselves but on others. And I invite you to decide to join with the slow work of God. To have patience until whatever it is that you desire happens. To let love be how you show up in the world. To be filled with loving kindness, with this sense of peacefulness, this sense of ease. Like the meditation said, song said, it's such a beautiful May you be filled with loving kindness. May you be well. May you be peaceful and at ease. And may you be happy. It's my desire that everyone that's watching this and everyone on the planet have all of that. That we watch our world from the eyes of love, loving. That we allow ourselves to be loved. I'd like to leave you with some words of wisdom from a man named Sam King, and they say this, and then you, in the moment that you become disillusioned with your normal satisfactions and ask, what do I really desire? Your soul, rather than your ego, takes charge of your life. In the moment that you are disillusioned with your normal satisfactions and ask, what do I really desire? Your soul, rather than your ego, takes charge of your life. Let's pray. <sighs> so just recognizing right now that God is still working on us. That that God that is love and that peace and ease and grace 
is shining its light on us to reteach us our loveliness. Because within us is all of that love and kindness and ability to shine our lights brightly and reteach other people their loveliness. <sighs> so what I know to be the truth is that each of us are thinking about how we can recalibrate our life. We're thinking about the slow work of God and how we can marinate in the vastness of the divine and find all that it is that we desire. Knowing what we desire and knowing that when we know exactly what it is we desire, that our soul takes over rather than our ego taking charge of our life. Hmm. So I'm grateful. I'm grateful to know that God's not done with me yet. I'm grateful to know that there is this ability for each of us to shine our light and to stand in the light and to shine the light on others. And I'm grateful to always remember that the God without is the God within each of us. So it's from that gratitude and all of that oh, wonderful feeling of love that I release these words into the law of mind, spirit, and action because I know the truth that God does the heavy lifting and I can just let my life be in his hands. So I say amen. And together we affirm. And so it is. So this is our time for uh, offertory. This information is out at the CSL SoutheastLA.org website. You can use Zella or Venmo at 225-287-8887. You can text your amount to 225-320-5100. Or you can mail a check to CSL Southeast Louisiana, care of Reverend Larry Marie Heil, 445 Magnolia Wood Avenue, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70808. We thank you for your tithes and donations.
Look around, there's something you can do. Look within you and find your spirit to change the world. There's got to be a change in you. team and I love that song love can move the world it says so much about who we can be and how we can make changes in this uh, reality setting in world of ours I want to just remind you that we have a live discussion on a conference line at 515-604-9000 with the participation code 475 Two two zero, and it will be immediately following the service, so Central Daylight Time. I invite you to join us there. And in closing, I'd just like you to remember, Disney claims to be the happiest place on earth, but we here at CSL Southeast Louisiana are definitely the most joyful. So until we meet again, may we be wrapped in the arms of love and kindness, and may you recalibrate your light and shine it on others and make the world a better place. We close our service now with Alive Alive. Have a great week.